Hey guys, I'm Mandarin. And I'm Shadow Duke. And today we wanted to talk about what kind of things that you can do when you're first starting off in RuneScape. So this guide is meant to be for people who are freshly new and don't really know what they want to do in RuneScape yet. So one thing that you can do when just starting off is doing a lot of quests. We're not going to go too in depth about what quests you can do because we did make a beginner's guide that details a lot of different quests that are very useful. But overall, just doing quests is a very good way to get started. You can check out all the different quests by clicking on the little compass icon. And you can see there are a lot of different quests to go through. A lot of these quests can give you a lot of useful items or even new spells and abilities, so they're really good to just look through and see what you want to do. You can organize your quest list in different ways, but if it's red, then it means you haven't completed it. If it's green, it means you have completed it. If it's in yellow, it means it's in progress. And if it's blue, it means that it's the active quest that you're currently working on. Another good thing to look at are the area achievements. If you click on this sword and shield icon, you'll open up the interface. Go ahead and click on the achievement tabs, and then you'll be able to see area achievements. All these achievements unlock a bunch of benefits, as well as some items that will help you while you play in RuneScape. Some of the more notable ones that you can get are doing the Varrock Easy Achievement that unlocks the furnace located in Edgeville. Another one is doing the Sears Hard Achievement that will give you access to an Enhanced Excalibur that's very good for PVM. There are many more to go over and it's going to be too much for this single video, so I would recommend that you go through and look at which ones you might want to get. There are a ton of useful ones. You're not going to be able to see the rewards on the interface, so you're going to have to look it up through the wiki. A lot of these achievements are actually going to require quests to be completed as well as certain skills, so it's very unlikely that you're going to be able to do most of them early on in the account, but it's definitely something to work towards. Alright, so now let's get into skills, which is a very big part of this game. So if you want to get a more detailed view of your skills, click on the sword and shield icon again, and go to the skills tab. There are currently 28 skills in this game. All of these skills will get you different benefits. Each skill will require a different way to level it up, and some of them will require different tools or other items that you might need. So say for Hunter, you might need to put down a box trap to do that, but you'll have to put it down in a specific location. And for something like, say, fishing, you'll naturally need a fishing rod, or you'll need a pickaxe for mining. A lot of these tools can be added onto your tool belt. So if you look below your character, you'll see a little tool belt icon. So you can click on that and you can see everything that's on your tool belt. When an item is on your tool belt, you won't need to have it in your inventory to actually use it when skilling or doing other actions in the game. In order to see if you can put something on your tool belt, just right click on the item and you'll see that it'll say add to tool belt. You can also swap out certain things on your tool belt if you get better items. So if you're starting off with an uh, iron pickaxe and you want to upgrade it to another pickaxe once you get a better one, you can easily add that onto your tool belt to make it a nice upgrade. Sometimes you'll need to do some kind of quest or unlock something else to be able to actually put an item onto your tool belt. So now the question is, how do you actually do scaling? Well, first you want to make sure that you have the proper tool on your belt and preferably the most upgraded one that you have available. For instance, I have a ruined hatchet on my tool belt. And then you could just walk up to any tree and chop it down. Now you can see I got a little bit of wood cutting experience as well as got some logs. With those logs you can go ahead and just light it and turn it into a fire or you can craft it into other things. It'll allow you to use the tinder box to make another fire, a knife to fletch it, or even make incense sticks make some arrow shafts, some short bows, and you can pretty much do this with any log that you find depending on what tree that you cut. And that's going to be the same with most skills. I just went ahead and bought a bird snare here and there's a couple of crimson swifts flying around. So I can go ahead and just lay down this bird snare and then just wait for a bird to land on the snare and then I would have caught it. And there we go, we can see a bird coming in and we went ahead and caught the bird. It'll provide you with meat that you can cook, or feathers that you can put at the end of arrow shafts, or even fish with them. And one last example of skilling is going ahead and catching some fish. Once again, just make sure you have the proper tool on your tool belt, and then find a fishing spot. You can see the fishing spots by looking at these little bubbles, and then you can go ahead and try and catch some fish. Now, when doing these skills, you're really going to want to do things that are going to be appropriate for your level, so you're going to be traveling all around the world just to find the best spot to actually train your skills. Obviously, that would be way too much information for this video, so go ahead and look for specific skilling guides when you want to trade a specific skill. We do have a couple of skilling guides on our own channel, and we're currently coming out with more as time goes on. Something else that you can do in order to find skills is actually opening up your map. 
A lot of these locations are going to have specific pictures. Like for instance, you can see there's a fishing spot here. You can see all the trees that are in this area. You can even locate divination colonies. So just take a look at the map if you don't want to use a guide and you'll be able to find different resource locations. And real briefly, we want to go over the different classifications of all the skills. So there are four main classifications that each skill is broken up into. You have your combat skills like strength and attack and defense, and those are gonna give you some new abilities that you can unlock and you can equip better armor and weapons, and you can even improve your health and defense. And skills like summoning can let you summon familiars to help out with a variety of different things. So if you're somebody that's into PVM, these skills are gonna be good to level up. And then there's gathering and artisan skills. So these two skill classifications are pretty closely linked together. You'll have gathering skills like mining, where you can, well, gather materials at certain locations, and then you can use them into some kind of artisan skill, like smithing, to then use those materials to craft into other useful items. And artisan skills are going to be useful to help you make different consumables that you'll need. So things like herbalore will help you make potions. Crafting is good to make different armors or equipment. Cooking is good to make food that you'll need for combat. And fletching is good to make things like arrows that you'll need for when you're doing range. And then there are support skills. So this is kind of like a miscellaneous category where other skills are grouped up into. But it can still be pretty useful. So agility is one of these support skills and that'll help you unlock different shortcuts that you can use to help make some traveling easier. And slayer will help you unlock new enemies that you can fight. And dungeoneering is good to help you earn different items that you can use. Invention is a bit of an odd skill because it's the only one in its category. It's considered an elite skill because you do need three other skills to be leveled up to level 80 specifically in order to actually use it. So for this, you'll need level 80 smithing, crafting, and divination to be able to use this. So far, it's the only elite skill, but there may be more in the future. And whenever you're in this skilling menu, you can go to the drop down here to help organize and see what specific thing you might want to look for. So if you're in mining, you can go to tools to see at what levels you can do some different pickaxe upgrades. Or in resources, you can see what different ores you can start mining. So just take some time to explore these menus and look through, see all the different things that you can unlock. Next up, we're going to go ahead and dive into the PVM category. There are three different combat styles that you can use. Melee, ranged, and magic. The nice thing about this game, unlike most MMOs, is that you don't have to stick with one combat style. You can switch based on how you're feeling on that day. Something that you can do is actually try out all three combat styles to see which one you like the most. Most of the content in this game can be done with any combat style that you like, so you can pretty much just choose your favorite and stick with it, or train all three at the same time. It's really up to you. Some monsters and bosses are going to have weaknesses to certain combat styles, but that's not really a requirement to kill them, it's more of a recommendation. When trying to get your equipment, you can go to the GE and buy it, or you can go over to some stores located around RuneScape to buy it if you're an Iron Man. In some cases, you could even craft your weapons, like for smithing as an example. For each combat style, there are different armors that you can wear, and that's going to decide what combat you're using. For instance, there's melee armor, magic armor, and there's ranged armor as well as their respective weapons. So if you want to be a magician, use your magic armor. If you want to be an archer, use your ranged armor. And if you want to do melee, go ahead and use that armor. As he was saying before, you can get most of the stuff that you need from the GE, but as an Iron Man, you're going to have to get everything yourself. So once you start reaching higher levels, you're mostly want to rely on trying to get drops for some of the gear that you want. But when you're starting off at a lower level, you can get a lot of the gear that you need here in Varrock, for example. So if you want armor for melee, you can go over here to Horvik. And you can get a lot of different leveled armors here, ranging from bronze all the way up to adamant. And you can get ranged weapons over at this shop from low. You can get arrows or bows here. You can even get armor as well. And over to the west, you can get staffs from Zaf's shop. And you can get armor for magic here as well. And to the south, you can get melee weapons. You can get a variety of different swords and different levels of them here. And if you're doing magic, you'll need runes to cast the spells. You can get runes from a multitude of different shops, but in Varrock at least, you can get them from Aubrey. You can even get a few free runes as well. We do also have a money-making guide that shows shop runs, and it'll show you all the locations where you can buy runes. We'll put a link for that in the description. Now let's very briefly go into combat. 
When starting off, it could be a bit overwhelming to figure out what abilities do what, so an easy way to get around that is by right clicking on this gear next to your combat bar and then clicking setting up action bar. This will set up the action bar based on the weapons that you're currently using, so if you're using ranged, it'll turn into a ranged bar. If I go ahead and equip my melee weapons, and then I do that again, right click on the bar, set up action bar, now it's going to give you a melee action bar. This may not be the most optimal way of doing it, but it's a good way to get you started at least. Get the basics down first, and then worry about perfecting your rotation later. You also notice that there's this yellow bar around my skills. That means all those skills will automatically be cast for me. If I want to increase that bar, go ahead and left click on the gear this time. And then you just need to move this slider. And as I move it to the right, that bar will get bigger. I move it to the left, and the bar will get smaller. If you don't want it to be automatic for you at all, you can also set it to full manual and it won't automatically cast any of the abilities for you. If you accidentally turned it off and you don't want that, just click on revolution mode and that yellow bar will be back. We do have more details and ability bars in another guide, so we'll go ahead and put a link in the description for that as well. I would definitely take the time to read over your abilities so that way you understand what they do. For instance, if you look at Destiny and you look at that icon on the bottom with the two swords, you'll notice that that only works with dual wielding weapons. So if you were to have a two-handed weapon, that would not work. Or if we look over at this bar right here, I have Quake. This only works with two-handed weapons. So you see it's grayed out, that means I can't use it because I only have dual wields on right now. Definitely read them over because some abilities will boost other abilities. In some situations, it'll actually be good to use a shield as well for some defensive abilities. For instance, this one right here, that will heal you for X amount of damage that's dealt to you based on the shield level that you're using or this reflect ability that will reflect damage back to the attacker. And another really important thing about PVM is going to be your adrenaline bar. So your adrenaline bar is going to be the yellow one that's on your action bar here. And there are a couple of different ways to gain adrenaline, but primarily you're going to gain it by attacking. So you can see it's going to go up in different percentage increments, and as you gain it you'll be able to use different abilities. Some abilities do not use any adrenaline, and you can see that just by hovering over them but other abilities will. So you can see for this ability, Type Bindings, you'll need 50% of your adrenaline to actually use it. It's a little bit misleading because you would think that it uses 50%, but it doesn't actually do that. It only uses up a little bit of it. You only need to get at least 50% to actually be able to activate it. So you see, once I use it, it only used up about 15% of it. So these abilities that only use up a small percentage of adrenaline are called Thresholds, but then you have ultimates that are going to use up 100% of your adrenaline. So if I use that, all of my adrenaline is going to be gone and it's going to use a really powerful attack. So typically you want to keep the abilities that don't use up any adrenaline in your revolution bar. And then you'll keep your thresholds and your ultimates outside of it to be activated whenever you specifically want it. So let's just look at the different thresholds and ultimates that you have and see which ones that you think you might want to use more than others and put that on your action bar. As we've mentioned before in the beginning, some abilities you won't be able to get right away. You'll have to unlock it in some way or another. Some abilities can be unlocked from quests. Others can be unlocked by getting codexes, which you can either buy or get as drops from certain enemies. Or doing mini games like Shattered Worlds. So it's a good idea to look at what abilities you might want to gain to work towards that as a goal. For example, abilities like Sunshine or Death Swiftness are really good because it increases your damage, but you'll need to do the World's Wakes quest to do that. Alright, and I think that's going to be enough information for now. Yeah, there's a lot more information that comes along in this game, as is with every MMO, but as a new player starting out, this is going to be all you really need to know for now. We will come out with more beginner type guides in the future, and we already have a couple of tips and tricks and beginner guides for you to take a look at now, so make sure to look in the description to see that. If there's any other questions that you're wondering about, let us know and we'll include that in our next guide. And with that, thank you all for watching. Please be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more in future content. And thank you to all of our patrons for the support. We also stream Monday through Friday on Twitch, 1 p.m. EST to 7 p.m. EST. Thank you all for watching and we'll see you later. Bye. Bye.